Good morning, boys and girls. My little bee keeps. How are you today? Check out my shirt, guys. You gotta love it. You gotta love it, huh? We got the we got the bl one blood bus here, huh? What does it say? Giving. I'm giving. Giving your best life or something like that. Jesus. How sweet is that? Oh, how sweet is this? How sweet is this? Oh, that's a completed box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot to tell you yesterday, the last thing I do on these boxes, the very last thing, I put these two cleats on, okay? And they're just pallet wood, all right? I cut them eight and a half inches long. And they're only, they're only put in with, I shoot them in, I dip them. There's my five gallon bucket. I just cut a bunch of these, however boxes I got ready. I just whack up a bunch of pallet wood, eight and a half inches, and I dip them in tall earth preservative. And while they're still wet, I come over here, flip the box up, and I take my brad nailer, 18 gauge brad nailer, inch and a quarter long, and I go zap, 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 zap. That holds it in place, no clamping. And then I get my screw gun. I do it right on the table here, you know, with a, with a setup and zap just two screws in that gives you a cleat yeah so yeah those are some pretty boxes they're going to get loaded with bees on my birthday how about that because i have a new moon on my birthday so good lord willing the creek don't rise and miss daisy don't have a project for me we're going to go to the field and hopefully I don't know what today is. Let's see what today is here on my on my little calendar here. Uh, we have May 11, so we got a few days till we hit the 19th B day, and we'll go in then. Get that B? Did you did you pick up on that one, guys? B day. We'll go into our existing colonies and rob out. We'll go a food frame, brood frame, seal, try to get seal brood, try to get seal brood with a few eggs, a plain and a plain Jane, plain Jane. Yeah, if I've got any weak hives out here as I'm going filtering through this stuff before the wax moth gets it and, and these bees say some haven't made it, I'll shake them out on the ground and grab those frames and put one there and one there, keep them keep them going yeah if i see anything starting to crawl with wax moth we'll pull it and we'll get it in the freezer overnight and then we'll pull it and then we will kill it we've killed everything on that frame and then we'll get it inserted into a strong colony so they can finish pit spit shine and polishing it and getting it ready for the next batch of bees so i've got projects guys I need more backer board lids, so here's a couple pieces here. Here's one. There's one there. I have two sheets there. They're going to be butchered today. We'll cut them. We will uh, bore the hole, feeder holes in them, and we will paint them. Paint them. Yes. It is a now we're into two fan. We're into a two fan scenario with this heat. I love this stuff guys this green tea I put I like strong green tea so I take four tea bags and I throw them in a quart mason jar I top it out with filtered water and then I shove it in the nuke for three minutes on high pull it out set it on the top of the stove it's pretty it's pretty hot it's not hot enough the jar is not hot enough to burn you but it's it's you know pretty hot so be careful. Pull it out, set it on the stove until it cools down a little bit. Put your plastic, I use wide mouth jars because they're like, I buy them like feeder jars for my bees. So wide mouth jars with a plastic lid. They, they come with metal lids. If you know somebody that cans, I got Hippie John over here, he cans. So I just give him all the lids and I buy plastic lids and the plastic lids are great because you can use them over and over and over again 
and I just take a little torch, propane torch, and I heat up a needle, and I melt a one little hole in about it. Maybe not even an eighth of an inch hole. Works great for a feeder. So I'm getting multi uses out of it. But yeah, I rotate the jars, this green tea, I, I rotate the jars and I put them in the fridge. And uh, yeah, I drink about, I don't know, eight cups a day probably, eight cups a day. But club soda is what I put in this. I get club soda, it's cheap, and it gives it a little fizzy to it. Don't buy tonic water, it's, it's pure poison. It's got high fructose corn syrup in it. It'll kill you, uh, yeah, it'll kill you. Uh, when I was a young lad, when they first started out, ethanol, ethanol, I was, what, what, what's this ethanol thing? I was talking to an old farmer, he said, the old farmer goes, ah, well boy, we're gonna start now, uh, corn in the ground to death. I said, is that a good thing? He said, I don't know, but uh, us farmers are going to be all right with it because we're going to make some money. we got to put on a lot of fertilizer, though, so he said the trade-off, you know, he said we we still throw down cow cow dung all over the field. We spread that out, but for much corn as we got to raise, we just said, you know, how much, how much cow poop can you fling, he said, you know. He said, so I guess we're going to corn the ground to death. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, uh, corn takes a lot out of the ground, okay? And so he said, now they're going to start taking corn and turning it into ethanol and, and putting it in car engines. He said, and I don't think that's a good idea. He said, I, I, I think there's going to be a high moisture content. Well, that old farmer was right. You start putting this ethanol stuff in your lawnmowers, chainsaws, outboard motors, guys. <laughs> It just eats the guts out of them things. So there's too much moisture in it. So you got to run out now and buy uh, non-ethanol. So now non-ethanol is, uh, I don't know, $4 a gallon or some crazy thing or more than that. I, I haven't bought ethanol in a long time. I buy some non-ethanol and put it in those fives there. And I haven't bought it in quite a while. So I don't know what that's going to run me, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, I thought I'd sit and chit chat here for a minute, sip on my tea, and, and I'm gonna burn out some lids. I'm gonna have what, 20, I don't know, looks like maybe 22 lids I'm gonna be burning out today, and I'll cut them and bore the feeder holes in them and, um, and paint them, paint them. And I'm gonna do everything right here in the barn with a nice fan blowing on me here. And it'll be a nice cool operation. And, uh, We'll be uh, getting out here working some bees soon, and like I said, I want to make more, make up more colonies. As you see here, I've got a whole stack here of ends. I don't know, there's going to be enough there, I think, for 28 boxes. I made 14 here a while back. They're out there waiting for bees, and uh, yeah, on these, on these lids, t on these boxes too, these nice little discs I put on here. I don't know if you for you guys that are just getting into beekeeping <coughs> here's a tip from steve oh do not do not have put them on if you put a setup on a rail system like i got you've seen my rail out here the ant proof and all that don't don't have all these hives looking all pretty lined up in the same direction put one hive one way turn the other hive the next way and so forth and mix up your colors so these queens don't get confused when they come back from the mating flight. They'll come out, they'll orientate to this box. They say, oh, there's home, okay. And then they fly off, get mated, and they come back to their box. But if they're all lined up, they may have a little brain fart on where they were at and get into the wrong box. And when they do that, the bees in that box are going to terminate them. So you've, you've wasted a whole month. So do me a favor, switch the boxes, put one one direction, one the other, and the girls won't get so screwed up, all right? A little tip from Steve-O there on that one, because if they get in the wrong box, it's called, I call it non-profit organization. Something like what Joe's got going on right now, a non-profit organization. 
I just, every day I wake up and turn on the TV and I'm going, oh boy, what's he up to today? And it just, it just amazes me day after day what this clown is up to, but it's not a clown, it's a corrupt mess. I, I just, I just don't understand what's going on, how they're getting away with what they're getting away with, but uh, time will tell. Maybe, maybe there's a day of reckoning. I think the man upstairs is watching this. I really do. Uh, he's done it before he has the man has flushed the toilet in the past and he's probably done it more than once uh these ancient 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 civilizations that we're now seeing under the sea uh like atlantis and and all these different things we've seen these things under the sea yeah he has flushed the toilet before and i think we're almost at a at a flush point I really do, guys. I, it just seems like it to me. Maybe, maybe leave a comment below and, and tell me if we're ready for another flush. Because I think I think the main man is going to flush the toilet. I really do. Because it's getting it's getting pretty stinky, you know. What's really getting stinky is our our healthcare system. My heart goes out to these 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 vets. I was in the military six and a half years, but I really don't consider myself a vet because I never had bullets shot at me before. I never crawled through a rice paddy. But these poor guys that are coming back, and I just see them, they're just so crippled up with not only uh, physical war wounds, but mental war wounds. and. And I've lost some friends because uh, it's worked on them. This PTSD has worked on them. They've, they've hit the bottle. They can't crawl out of the bottle. And um, they're getting no help from Big Pharma for simple fact that they don't understand. Big Pharma, it's, big, it's, it's a huge lie, okay? And I'll tell you why in a second. I feel it's a huge lie. Because you're getting, I'm getting false information from my primary care physician, and he's not a young whippersnapper. He's an older gentleman. Well, he's my age. Okay. He realizes that I just did not fall off the turnip truck. Okay. And he's quite amazed because he's seen transformation on old Stevo over the years. I've been. I've been going to this guy since, uh, 99? 99, I've been dealing with this guy. He's seen a transformation in Stevo, okay? And in a way, he likes what he sees. But when he talks to me how I got to this point, uh, he don't believe it. Now, either he's totally corrupt or he does not know what's up. I know that he was trained by Big Pharma, and if you go outside their guidelines as to what they want you to do, and their whole mission is to push treatments, not to have you in perfect shape. Okay, you have to be treated. When you come in a doctor's office, you're seen as a dollar sign. You're not seen as a healthy human being. Well, you're not gonna be a healthy human being, first of all, if you're on a standard American diet. That ain't happening, okay? It's not happening. Because the standard American diet is full of sugar, high carb and poison. Now they're claiming that you can go ahead and drink vino, wine, and you can have four martinis a day. All of that, guys, all of that is poison. And it will put your body in a high state of inflammation. Because when it hits your belly button, it goes in here. When it goes down and hits your belly button, it turns to sugar, all right? Sugar is poison in the human body. It's not in a honeybee. And it should say on the label of every sack of sugar that I buy here, 
not for human consumption. Honeybees only, but it doesn't. They promote it. Big sugar, guys, and I'm finding this out now, big sugar is controlling a lot of people and they're, call, they're, they're now saying, they're controlling our government, believe it or not, big sugar is controlling our government because they're putting out the false narrative that Captain Crunch, Cheerios, and Fruit Loops are in that pyramid, the healthy pyramid diet. Grains and sugar, and grains turn to sugar when it hits your belly button. This is common knowledge, okay? None of these people in the healthcare department are telling you this. It's so funny, I was at the urologist, and he said, these doctors keep saying when they look at me, they go, uh, for your age, you're, you're doing extremely well. And I tell them all, I said, listen, what I do is so easy, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely, ridiculously easy to do what I do. I get up every day, I eat bacon and eggs, bacon and sausage. I go to the gym. I come home. I work on bees all day long. I don't kill myself, guys. I just steadily work like an old plow mule all day long. Yeah, that's what I do. And they just like, oh. Uh, well, what do you eat? I've said I eat meat. I eat a carnivore diet. Now, I eat bacon and eggs and bacon sausage, but I primarily eat nothing but beef steak. Occasional fish, salmon, sardines, uh, chicken. Chicken to me without a skin on it, guys, is just totally worthless. I'll eat turkey. I love the turkey skin, the crispy turkey skin. The fatty steaks with lots of fat on the outside. Remember how they used to tell you to trim that fat off, throw that away, that'll clog your arteries. <clears throat> They're still preaching that today, to this day, guys. This fake news, they're, they're preaching this fake news today in modern medical. But there's a few doctors out there, stay with me on this, guys, stay with me on this. Write these names down. Dr. Jeffrey Life, Anthony Chafee, Sarah Salvador, Sean Baker, and Dr. Ken Berry. We'll write these people down. There's many more out there. There's many more like myself out there. And all these people I'm talking about, I was doing this before I ran into these people on YouTube. All right? You can learn a lot of stuff. So these people I'm talking about confirmed in my head what is actually how we are supposed to be eating in our lifestyle. You're getting fed a lot of false information out there by Big Pharma and it's just, it's nothing but pure greed, guys, just like our government and our leader that's running this thing now, how corrupt he is. Okay, you see it. You know what he's up to. Lie after lie after lie. And that's what we're getting in Big Pharma now. It's, we're getting fed so much bad information. And everybody's walking around. If you, if you ever want a freak show, go, go to a hospital. You can walk in there and say, where's the calf? I need a cup of coffee. Oh, the cafeteria is down yonder over the idea. Go on in there. If you don't believe what I'm saying, go on in there and sit down and get you a cup of coffee and see these healthcare providers. There's some nurses that look good, but the majority of them are monstrous, overweight, huge. And they are all been brainwashed because they're told, listen, you can have whatever you want to eat. And if you get in trouble, we'll take care of you because we have the drugs that'll do it. So you just keep eating your ice cream and your nonsense and we're going to take care of you. So that's where we're at today with Big Pharma. 
But I, I wanted to tell you something that was unreal that the doctor told me the other day when I was in his office. He was asking me, you know, yada yada, you look like you're in good shape. Yeah, I said, well, I'm feeling great. Um, then he asked me what I eat, and his eyeballs opened up like, whoa, you can't do that. You can't do that. I said, what do you mean I can't do that? Yeah, you're telling me, you're telling me, Doc, that I can't do what I have been doing for like four years now? Huh? Four years? I said, yeah. Uh, you got the... He said, no, 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 no. The body runs on sugar. I swear to God, guys, that's what he told me. The human body runs on sugar, glucose, fructose. I said, well, this body don't. Am I something, am I something special? Am I something special? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I said, no. Let me tell you something, Doc. Uh, if, if I eat sugar, my body goes into a high state of inflammation. My, my blood sugar spikes and my blood pressure spikes. And, and I said, look at my ancient ancestors. You know what he did, guys? He knew he was losing this conversation. He wasn't winning on this conversation. He had to jump to his next patient right away. He jumps up and he smiles. Yeah, he said, yeah, them old, them, them, them people all died in their 40s. I said, yeah, maybe by a saber-toothed tiger. But I said, their teeth were good and their bones were good and strong. They were hunters and they ate meat. They were carnivores. Oh, no, 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 no. I said, well, the Egyptians weren't. They, the Egyptians, they were grain eaters. And look at their bones and teeth. They're all rotted out. Their bones were all brittle. You can, you can dig them people up and see what they were up to. But the guys before them, yeah. The hunter-gatherers, they were strong individual, And they lived a long time, too, Doc. Yeah, yeah. They, it's, you're going to be lied to, guys, with this. And especially with this uh, cholesterol nonsense. If you listen to Anthony Chafee... He had a nice article. He did it at a year ago. He did a uh, podcast like a year ago. Uh, and he talked about cholesterol. Barry talks about it. If you plug in uh, Dr. Ken Barry, guys, and any problems that you have, and you've probably got a laundry list of them, whether it's skin issues, cancer, um, gut, gut issues, uh, your teeth falling onto your freaking head, uh, any issues you have, pull up Dr. Ken Berry and type in the problem you have. Boom, click on it. He will explain to you what's up. And I was listening to a podcast of Anthony, uh, Anthony Chapey, uh yesterday it was, and he did this like a year ago. I don't know why I didn't pick up on that a, a year ago, but anyway... Uh, every day I'll plug into those guys and I learn something every friggin' time I do it, okay? And it's nothing but common sense. Common sense. And he was saying cholesterol, no. He said, well, since we started cholesterol medication, he said, everything's gone up. Diabetes, cancer, uh, heart disease, clogged arteries, everything has gone up, not down with cholesterol medication, gone up. And he said all the people, the studies that they've had, everybody that's had high LDL, now that's the bad cholesterol, have lived longer than the people with low LDL. So all these modern doctors today with big pharma drugs, because they're banking billions with these cholesterol medications, okay, just think about it. Everybody and his brother's on this stuff. You're probably on it. You're probably on a hypertension medication, high blood pressure medication. Yeah. IBS medication because the grains and cereals and stuff are tearing your guts out. Okay. That's another funny one, guys. I was at the urologist. He was talking to me about 
we got into a little health issue. You know, these guys are, they're so busy. They're coming through the door, guys, like cattle. I mean, it's just, you know, one sick person after the other. And uh, we got on the subject of, of carnivore. He said, what? Now, he's a little plumpy, this, this, and most of these guys are. I haven't seen too many healthcare providers that are in good shape at all. None. No. He's he's got a, he's got a, a, he's got some Dunlap going on. Dunlap over his belt, you know, that belly. And I, and he asked me uh, what my diet scenario was. I just told him it's very simple. I just eat meat, bacon and eggs and stuff. And I only I only eat, eat two meals a day. In the af late afternoon, if I get a little munchy, I'll have some uh, handful of nuts, some walnuts or pecans, and that's, and then wash it down with some green tea. I'm I'm hunky dory. And he said, "Oh my God, that's all you eat is meat." I, you know what he said, guys? I couldn't believe it. He said, "How do you poop?" I said, "What do you mean, how do you poop? You, you don't have any fiber. You have to have that fiber." Guys, let me tell you something about fiber. There's, first of all, you got plenty of fiber in the meat you're eating. Once you, once your body takes all it needs, because it's so nutrient dense, meat is, it's nutrient dense. It's, it's the perfect food for the human body. Nobody's gonna admit this to you. No doctor's gonna tell you this. A nutritionist has got his act together, may, but yeah. I told this doctor, I said, I poop wonderfully. Sometimes I don't poop every day, but it don't matter. I don't worry about it. Whenever I feel like I got to poop, I poop. And it comes out so smooth and so nice. And it's a nice fluffy floater. He looked, he looked at me, guys. <laughs> he looked at me like, huh? No. And I said, no, Doc, it's not a slinky sinker. It's a fluffy floater. And I said, it's pretty too. Have you, have you ever seen a pretty poop doc? Maybe I should just bring you in some of mine and I can show you a pretty poop. Oh no, spare me on that. I said, okay, I'll spare you on that one, doc. <laughs> I said, doc, no, you, no, no worries there. You'll have pretty poop, okay, pretty poop. And he couldn't believe it. Now here's these guys, these modern medical people, and this guy, this urologist, he's inside the body, okay? He goes in there, he's, of course his specialty is jerking out, pulling out cancerous, uh, uh, you know, prostate glands and this and that. But, yeah, he, uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's amazing how Big Pharma has trained these doctors not knowing what actually the human being should be eating. Uh, and it's, it all comes from, you have to follow the money, follow the money, and you, you follow the money with this corrupt government we have, okay? And then follow the money with Big Pharma and everybody else, and, and Big Sugar? And we have big sugar here in Florida, guys. Down there in South Florida. I mean, there is cane sugar, which is a lot better. I rather, I don't want to feed my bees beet sugar. Beet sugar, they they grow a lot of it in Michigan. Beet sugar. I, I don't want stuff, I don't want that crap in my bees. But cane sugar is what I like to feed. Where I make my, you know, my feed syrup out of to feed my bees south florida is full of it and uh i don't know lake okeechobee they say now you can't even i've never been down there and looked at the cane fields so i can't tell exactly exactly where they're all at but they're around lake okeechobee and a lot of that all that water drains south and it ends up dumping into the keys goes through the Everglades, and the Everglades is kind of the filter system. But they started, they started chopping up the Everglades years ago and putting canal systems in. So they've taken away the natural filtration of that water going out, and then it ends up dumping into the Keys and going out 
down at the Keys and is killing all the coral down there. I haven't, I haven't dove, I used to be a scuba diver back in the day, back in the early 70s, and I've taken several trips to the Keys, and that was real early days, and it was already, they already shot it, I was a spear fisherman, and they already shot it out. It was hardly any fish left. I mean, you go to the dry tortugas and you could spear some fish and stuff, but yeah, it was pretty much shot out. They had some nice coral reefs, but now since then, it's been umpteen years, that's the 70s, so now the coral is like dying. Uh, all this fertilizers and stuff from the farmlands going down there, and I don't know if it's because of the sugar cane. I don't know what they put on sugar cane to make it grow. I don't know, guys. But they tell me the Lake Okeechobee, you don't even want to eat the fish there. The nice bass and the bluegill and yada yada, it's all high mercury content. Uh, they don't even want to eat, eat the fish. From what I'm hearing, I don't know for sure. This is just what I'm hearing. It could be fake news, but yeah. But anyway, uh, I don't know where I was going with that conversation, but anyway, uh, we have to be vigilant, guys, with what's going on with our government and big farm and all. I was going there, I guess I was going there because of sugar. Uh, the sugar prices have gone crazy too now. I'm, I'm paying 63 cents. And I'm sure it's just going to keep going up because Joe's fuel keeps going up. So I'm going to have to raise the price of bees. I'm still going to be cheapest, cheapest in the USA. My bees are going to be $140 for five frame nuke. And if you bring back my box, I give you 20 bucks back. So they're $120 basically for five frames of bees, which is the cheapest probably in the USA still. So I don't think I'm going to run out of work. I'm going to be able to keep on working forever if I keep my bees at a lower price. I know a lot of guys aren't going to like, but I don't raise enough bees here. And if I was in my 20s, like some of you guys are now, and want a career, uh, you could make a decent living selling bees, raising bees, selling bees. The honey business is a rough racket. That pays for maybe, the honey maybe pays for the gasoline that you're driving these bees all over the place, setting them out. You may pick up some money on um, pollination but I've heard guys getting burnt on that too because if the farmer doesn't make a good crop, you probably better get your pollination money on the front side of the thing and not at the tail end of the thing. You better get your money up front because before that bloom pops because if that crop don't come in for that farmer, he's not gonna be paying you for that, for that pollination. I've heard that so many times, it's ridiculous. And if, the, and if the farmer says, no, I'm going to pay you on the tail end of this thing, say, no, I'll, I'll be moving on. I'll be moving on. And I'd, I never got into pollination, so I really have no clue what I'm talking about. But I'm just, I hear things through the grapevine, okay? I'm just saying. I hear things through the grapevine. So, anyway, I need to get busy, guys, and stop BSing here. I've got a lot to do today. It's going to be an easy day. I'm going to burn out probably 22 of these five frame new backer board lids. I do it right here on my little homemade table. Oh, this was a good one, guys. I went down there to Lowe's this morning after I did my mile hike at the, at the gym and I wanted to pick up two more of these brute cans. So I go, I asked an individual there who, where do you keep the brute? Well, they're out there in the farm, the garden area. So I went out there and there they were. They were all stacked up in or, you know, inside one another. So I, I'm looking, okay, there they are. But you'll see these gray lids, these flat, they're flat lids. <laughs> Nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. And Miss, I said something to Miss Daisy and she said, we went through this once before, she said. 
and we had to get somebody and they found the lids way way up there at the top they had to get a forklift and go way up the top and get them out of a box way up top so <clears throat> there was two dome black dome shaped lids and I'm going that's not the lids for these so I flagged somebody down and this guy came over and he, I said I I'm, I said, I've got the brute cans here, but I can't find the lids. He, he goes over. He's, he was a great big walrus guy. This, thing, this guy was like 400 pounds. He waddles over there, and he grabs those two dome-shaped lids. There was two of them there. And he slammed them on top of the, of the gray, gray brutes. There you go. And I said, well, sir, that's, that's, that's not the lids that go on these. And uh, I'm looking for the gray flat lids. Well, I don't know where they're at. I don't know where they're at. And uh, normally, they put them somewhere else. Uh, he was too lazy, fat and lazy, to find out where the proper lids are for the brutes. He said, well, they fit. Those lids fit. I said, yes, uh, they appear to fit. Yes, sir. But I said, that's not what I want. I need flat lids for the project I'm doing. You see what I'm doing here with these guys. This is a nice working height, by the way. Throw a sheet of plywood on there and put four of these brutes down. And, uh, he, well, that's it. He said, that's it. I said, okay, sir, I appreciate your help. And, uh, but that's, I'm going to have to move on because that's not what I want. And, uh, he never, he never wanted to investigate guys to find out or call somebody and say, where are the flat lids to the brute cans? And they probably would have found them way up there in a box somewhere. But it was too much. It was just too much, guys. So uh, keeping blood pressure low, you know. The problem was I had two of these cans out on the out on out down the lane, 700 feet away, sitting there waiting for the garbage man to pick up. But they were inside. The stuff inside were in the heavy-duty bags. So as they came back, I stopped pulled out the bag, set them by the mailbox so the trash man can pick them up today's pickup day. And then I took the two cans back and now Steve-O has a work surface. So how about that? Whoa, easy, easy blood pressure guys. Bring it down, bring it down to Steve-O's world. All right, I will see you guys soon. Be happy, be strong. We gotta keep getting on. Steve-O loves you. See ya. Okay, one little final trick here, guys. I got two fans blowing across here. I'm producing, I'm producing toxic silica dust. I got a DWAP blower right here. I'm, I'm bridging two pieces of three-quarter right here. I put my X on there. Just crisscross it, crisscross your edges with a straight edge. Make a mark. Stop down at Harbor Freight and get you some cutter wheel like this. Comes in a kit. Comes in a kit like this. Stand off, stand off to the side. Don't stand here and let this silicon dust whip up into your face. It's toxic. Stand off to the side. I just went through a battery. Save these. Sometimes they'll split real thin. You don't want them. Get the thicker ones. Save those. Change batteries.
That blower sucks up a lot of juice. Okay, I've only got, I don't know, about 15 more to go. I'll have 20 some lids today. I knocked it out in no time. Uh, these sheets are fairly fragile. Like I pulled this last sheet out of my truck and I grabbed it at both ends and it, it snapped dead center. It snapped dead center. So when you pull it out, make sure you're handling from the side. I didn't lose any material to speak of. So it was no big deal. But yeah, this is this is what you want to do. I thought I'd show you real quickly. This is the last thing we're going to put on our on the Stevo Beefy Beehives, and uh, what is not bad to go with, guys, on these lids. This is a cement board, obviously. It tracks a lot of heat, holds heat. So, if you can, it's not necessary, but if, if you can, try to paint these white. Uh, you may be able to get away with not painting them at all, but I think this is a porous concrete. I think it'll soften over time, but if you seal it, you're gonna have a great product. And that's it, I mean, save your plugs. Save your plugs, like here's a little thicker one. Just glue it, just bond tight three it to a little four inch square of pallet wood. Boom, a plug. When in transport, put a piece of Gorilla Tape, small piece, three quarter, over your up and over, hold it down. These are so light, these, these plugs are so light, you're going down the highway, they will blow out. And then you've got a, um, yeah, a bee disaster, so. Put a little piece of Gorilla Tape over when in transit. Also, these lids will blow off. Get you some shrink wrap, shrink wrap it. And now you've got your little deal here that you can close very simply. You don't have to put staple screen over it no more and all that nonsense. Unless you want to save these and transfer these bees, bees to another box to where you don't give away these, these discs. You can put them in another box and then staple screen over that for your customer. Also, I failed to tell you, do not, this is a three, seven eighths hole here. Don't put these on and then bore the hole through because your paddle blade could catch this side and destroy that. I didn't try that, but I'm telling you that's what'll happen more than likely. So drill your hole, put your disc up here, take a magic marker eyeball and spot a little put a little spot center of this hole put a little spot center and put a little spot here set your disc aside drill all if you've got a bunch of these boxes drill all your 7 8 hole first and then come back change bits and put an eighth inch bit on and pilot this this screw hole then install your disc that will be all for today see you on the next one bye bye